dedicated server configuration, increased dew collector water generation, adjustable player station heat maps, zombies that can force slap you, extreme speed, turning slowly, mod individual zombie stats including health, radiated health regeneration, demo explosion range and damage, indestructible blocks, we're in the honey, and much much more. Welcome survivors, this is Eerie Knight of the Pseudopossi and today marks the latest version of the mod gen GUI. Just a quick aside for those new to these parts, I created this GUI here that in just three simple steps you can customize and create your own personal mods without needing to edit any game files. The GUI does it all for you. For a tutorial on how to use, check out our original video, link in the description below. From all the wonderful suggestions we have received from both previous ModGen videos and our patrons, you've all kept me quite busy lately. If you don't see your suggestion in this update, don't worry, I have it on my to-do list and it will make its way in a future update. Now let's get started. I've had several suggestions for adding the capability to easily configure a dedicated server config file. Well, here it is. It contains all the parameters that the server config file contains, and if you mouse over each one, in many cases it gives the exact same explanation as what is written in the contents of the server config XML file. Some of them are more condensed here for space, but you all get the point. To set up this feature, it is quite similar to setting up the mod path of your GUI. Navigate to this folder here called 7 Days Server Directory and simply copy and paste the file path in which you'd like to write your server config file. Why is that important? Well, if you have your server config file already in that path, it will automatically load your parameters into the GUI and populate all the boxes. So you'll be able to see what settings you currently have defined and thus can inform your decision to, as to how you want to change it. Don't have a server config file? Not to worry. If there is no config file in that directory, the GUI will load default values for you and you can tweak them as you please. Upon clicking the configure server button, BAM! A pop-up window appears. For those that have already used the GUI, this is a new feature. Anytime you generate a mod, or in this case a server config file, a window will pop up that once clicked upon will take you to the folder in which your new mod or config file has been written. Next up, I'd like to introduce you all to the newest mod category, blocks. Currently, we have several options for you to choose and configure your mods. There are two general categories, player shapes and stations. Under player shapes, you may adjust the hardness, which is essentially the number of hits required for the dev super digger to destroy a block, to ramp that up a notch to truly make it an indestructible object. Stability glue is a measure of blocks horizontal support, meaning higher values will increase a block's ability to support more weight, making it easier to build. Careful when using this mod as removing the mod after building something that would normally not support the added weight might fall down into a giant heap. You can adjust the number of hit points a block material will have all the way from wood to steel. And last but not least, you can increase or decrease the number of times it takes to upgrade a block with a given tool. For example, one hit upgrade with a stone axe anyone? It should be noted all pre-populated items in the box are the game's default values. The second tab labeled stations contains all the player stations the player can build. Like before, all the initial values in the boxes are the game's default. For the dew collector, you can change the minimum and maximum time to generate water. In addition, you can adjust the hit points and more importantly, you can tweak the heat map strength of the station. Heat maps are the game's mechanic to grab zombies' attention over time so using stations will attract unwanted attention to that location. So setting it to zero will allow you to use your stations without ringing the dinner bell. All the other stations in the game are adjustable, so tweak to your liking. One of the biggest changes to this version of the GUI is the complete overhaul of the Zombies Mods category. It is still a work in progress, but it has come a long way. Before, the only zombie stats you could adjust were zombie range, which would affect the range of all zombies. Now you can adjust individual groups of zombies based on their shared template. For example, bikers and lumberjacks use the strong melee template, so adjusting these, these values will affect th those types of zombies. All the affected zombies will be listed in the tooltip, though currently it does not do that. Also, not all templates are currently available here, but will make its way in the next update. Again, work in progress. You'll notice that there is more than just range now. You can adjust player damage, making zombie hits super weak. Block damage is also adjustable, so if you want blocks that are completely impervious to zombies, set it to zero and watch as they never destroy a block again. You can adjust the strength of infections and abrasions upon hitting the player as well. Higher values will increase the amount of increase in the status ailment per hit. The biome and loot drops tabs are the same for now, but there is now a fourth tab containing general stats. First, we have Feral Sense, which makes zombies more sensitive to the player's actions and will be drawn from further away 
towards the player. Make sure to have Feral Sense on in the game settings, otherwise changing the default values won't do anything. So once enabled, you can decrease Feral Sense if it is a bit too strong for you, or for an added challenge, ramp that up and draw zombies from further away. Our next configurable option is the general stats. These are applied to all zombies. The turn speed is a measure of how fast zombies can turn to face the player. So if you feel zombies are too well coordinated for you, turn that down to make their movements slower. Move speed is the speed zombies walk at when they're not aggroed on the player. When you see them strolling around off in the distance, this is that speed. By default, it is quite low, but if you want them to shamble around faster, give it an increase. Move speed aggro is the speed they move upon setting their sights on you. So if Nightmare is a tad too slow, try this for good measure. Move speed randomization will add some more randomization to the speed zombies move toward you when aggroed. Can climb ladders is a true false setting, which gives zombies the ability to climb or not climb ladders. Set to false to watch zombies pass by ladders as if they are not a viable path. Health randomization will modify the base health of zombies by plus or minus this value here. So once you've set all the zombies to your desired settings and you're happy, but you play and you feel the biker moves too fast for you. Well, don't worry, I've got you covered. You can adjust each individual zombie to your specific tastes. So if you set a different move speed aggro here, this value will supersede the one set previously, making this zombie move differently from the rest. You can also change its max health, jump distance, and adjust the amount of hit points the radiant version regenerates. Dramatically increasing that will make the rad remove mod an absolute must-have mod. The demolition zombie is a special case. For him, we can adjust his explosion damage to blocks and players as well as the radius of his explosion and the bonus damage to terrain. So if we want to nerf him, we can do so and make his explosion as powerful as a wet fart. Or conversely, we can break the world. Your choice. As this is all work in progress, not all zombies are yet configurable. I have been going in alphabetical order thus far and have made my way down to cop. I'll continue in this order and it will most likely take a few more updates to get all of them in. However, if there is a zombie you just need to have as soon as possible, say the poor guy down at W, let us know in the comments below and I can skip ahead for the more desired zombies. Our final new additions are a bit smaller in scale and those would be the new more loots tab in the loot mods category. Ultimately, this mod will allow you to add additional loot to a variety of loot containers in the game. Since we gotta start somewhere, I've added additional honey to tree stumps so you can set the amount you get and the probability to find it. And for eggs and birds nests, you can adjust the probability to find eggs. This category will be expanded, so feel free to give me some suggestions in the comments for what loot you'd like to see more of and where. I'd also like to take an opportunity to discuss a mod that nearly made it into this version, but unfortunately ran out of time. This mod adds the burnt forest biome back to the world. Based on my research, it seems impossible to add additional biomes to RWG, and I haven't had much luck yet replacing an existing biome with the burnt forest. If any of you all are experienced 7 Days modders, feel free to tell me how much of an idiot I am as I am pretty newbie when it comes to 7 Days modding. Anyway, my current workaround will be to adjust a random world generation world after it is generated by editing the biome's image file. By changing the color to purple, the burnt forest biome assets will load in game. So I am setting up the GUI to pick a percentage of an existing biome to replace and the number of blobs to spawn. Blobs are circular shaped regions with a gradient non-smooth edge that will overwrite an existing region. They have a randomized spawn point in which the algorithm fills them in. A single large blob with a 50% fill looks something like this. As we increase to 5, 10, and 50 blobs, all 50% fill, you can get the general idea of the control you can have when you're creating your burnt forest biome. This is what 80% fill looks like with 100 blobs, 500, and 5,000. Still work in progress, but this will make it into the next public release of the GUI. So what does the future look like? Well, I still have plenty of suggestions you all have given me, and I'm continuing to develop those. But what about the bigger picture? I would certainly love to eventually add new items, weapons, zombies, and other assets to the game that you'll be able to configure to your liking. I am planning to make my own assets and won't use anyone's existing work unless, of course, they give me permission to do so. If you are a modder and you would like to see your unique items implemented in my GUI, I can make a special tab for you in the GUI with your name, the mod you created, and a link to your website. While I don't have any plans right now to do any major game overhauls as the GUI develops, it may essentially become an overhaul mod as the breadth of changes go. So I could envision a prepackaged selection of mods that could encompass a larger overhaul in which you can configure various settings. Anyways, I've rambled on long enough. Thanks for watching everyone. Please like and subscribe and don't forget to download the GUI from the link in the description below.
below. Anyone can download. You do not need to be a Patreon member to do so. Speaking of, thank you to all of our patrons whose support helps to improve the quality of the channel and the development of the GUI. Thank you so much. See you all in the next video.